Welcome to the Daily Reminder Network. Sunnah Revival by Sheikh Mu'iz Bukhari Sunan relating to humor and banter Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh My dear brothers and sisters in Islam this is Mu'iz Bukhari recording for the Daily Reminder Network For today's episode insha'Allah ta'ala we are going to be focusing on the sunan and etiquettes regarding humor and banter Humor and laughter in measured doses make you feel good as they say laughter is the best medicine and the good feeling that you get due to the release of certain chemicals and neurotransmitters in your brain when you smile and laugh remains with you even after the laughter subsides good humor once in a while never harms anyone rather it helps you keep a positive optimistic outlook through difficult situations disappointments and loss from a social point of view good polite humor and banter strengthens our relationships with others by triggering positive feelings and fostering emotional connections when we smile and laugh with one another a positive bond is created this bond acts as a strong barrier against stress disagreements arguments and sadness as human beings it's of utmost importance that we strike a beautiful balance to live happy lives and our religion does not in any way ask us to be serious all the time as this was never the case even with our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam look at this beautiful narration that has been recorded in the book of imam muslim rahimahullah and the narration goes along the lines of these words once abu bakr radiyallahu an he meets hanzala radiyallahu an and hanzala radiyallahu an was uttering to himself nafaqa hanzala nafaqa hanzala hanzala has turned a hypocrite hanzala has turned a hypocrite abu bakr radiyallahu an he was amazed he goes to hanzala radiyallahu an and asks him ya hanzala why are you saying this why are you saying that you have become a hypocrite then hanzala radiyallahu an goes on to say ya abu bakr o abu bakr whenever i am with rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam i think of jannah i think of paradise i think of the blazing fire of jahannam i think about death and i am engrossed with thoughts of the akhirah of the hereafter but the minute i enter home the the minute i uh, meet my family or uh, the time i'm spending with my family and children my wife and my children i tend to forget all of that and i get engrossed with worldly matters so i feel that i have turned a hypocrite abu bakr radiyallahu an then goes on to tell him ya hanzala I too am going through this same issue. I too am suffering from the same problem. Let us both go to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and clarify this matter. Both of them go to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and inform him. And he sallallahu alaihi wasallam teaches them something amazing. He teaches them, he tells them, he tells them both, if you were to remain in the state that you are generally when you are with me, if you were to think of paradise all the time if you were to think of jahannam all the time if you were to think of death all the time the angels would come down and greet you they would shake hands with you but rather it should be saatun wa saatun there should be an hour for this and an hour for this in the sense we should have moments where we think about akhira think about jahannam think about death but there should also be moments where we have some fun and laughter as long as it is within the guidelines of sharia say when you are with your family with your wife and your children there is no harm in sharing a light moment there is no harm in having a little fun once again as long as it is within the guidelines of sharia this is the beautiful balance that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam teaches us my dear respected brothers and sisters in islam this was the example of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who was the epitome and pinnacle of good conduct in everything yes he sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a prophet who prayed until his feet would swell but he used to also enjoy light moments with his friends and family he would have fun with them and even when asked about this by his companions he replied that he would occasionally joke but he made it very clear that whilst he did amuse others he would always say the truth and nothing but the truth and this particular narration was narrated by imam ahmed ibn hanbal rahimahullah 
Now, let's share a few of the light moments of the Prophet ﷺ. Once an old lady comes to the Prophet ﷺ and asks him to make dua, to pray for her that she goes to Jannah, that she be granted entry into Jannah, an old lady. So Rasulullah ﷺ looked at her and then told her, I'm sorry, but old ladies are generally not granted entry into Jannah. The story goes along the lines of these words. The lady became very upset and she almost broke into tears. Then Rasulullah in a very beautiful and pleasant manner, he explained something to her, starting off by reading the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where he Azza wa Jal states, Verily, we have created them, them in the sense the maidens in Jannah, of a special creation. And we made them young, we made them virgins. And then the Prophet ﷺ cheered her up by explaining to her in a very pleasant manner that she would be made young once again and admitted into paradise. Another instance is once when the Prophet ﷺ went to the marketplace and saw a Sahabi, one of his companions, by the name Zahir. Now, Zahir was a companion of the Prophet ﷺ who was from the outskirts of the city. And he wasn't a person who had a very great facial appearance, but he was very close to the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ notices, notices him in the marketplace. He goes from behind and hugs him and then cries out, who wants to buy this slave? Who wants to buy this slave? Now Zahir radiallahu he, he could not recognize the individual behind him. So he started to fidget and struggle. Who are you? Who are you? Who is this person? And then suddenly he felt the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And then he relaxed. You know, he just, he became calm because it was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa who was hugging him. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa goes on to cry out, who wants to buy this slave? Who wants to buy this slave? Then Zahir radiallahu an quietly tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, I don't think that I will fetch you a good price because I'm not that valuable an individual. But then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went on to tell him very lovingly, Ya Zahir, you may think that of yourself, but in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are extremely valuable. Allahu Akbar. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, now that we have established that humor was present in the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, let us focus on the protocols, guidelines and limits that he taught us in regard to uh, us observing a sense of humor. Number one on the list is that we must take extra precaution that we do not insult anyone by our jokes. As our maker states in Surah Al-Hujurat, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la yaskhar qawmun min qawmin asa an yakunu khayran minhum wala nisa min in Asa Ayakun Hairam in Hun Wala tell Mizu and Fusakum Wala tell Abazu Bil Al Kob Bitsalis Mulfusu Kubadal Eman Wamal Lamiatub Faula Ikahum Zalimu. O you who have believed, let not a group ridicule another group. Perhaps they may be better than them. Nor let women ridicule other women. Perhaps they may be better than them. And do not insult one another and do not call one another by offensive nicknames. How bad is it to insult one's brother after having faith? And whoever does not repent, then it is those who are the wrongdoers. Next in line is that we must not frighten anyone as a joke. As the Prophet ﷺ is reported to have said, it is not permissible for a Muslim to frighten another Muslim. 
The next guideline is that we must not lie at all to make people laugh. As at times in our attempts to humor others, we can fall into the trap of the devil by exaggerating or lying. We should always remember it is forbidden to lie in Islam. The final guideline is that we must take heed not to joke or laugh excessively as anything in excess is harmful to an individual other than good deeds of course. So let us all strive to achieve this balance by emulating our beloved Prophet Muhammad Please don't forget to share this video around as much as possible to inspire an amazing Sunnah revival. Jazakumullah khair wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Support the Dawa. Donate now. Go to thedailyreminder.org slash donate.